For USCFootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Shaka and Spratling for instant analysis of USC's Tuesday press conference of Arizona Week. Shaka, we got to talk to a lot of people today, actually. We got to talk to head coach Clay Helton, offensive coordinator Graham Harrell, and running back Vavai Malapai and wide receiver Tyler Vaughns. Shaka, I'm going to start with offensive coordinator Harrell just because it was the first time we got to talk to him since the game actually happened against ASU. And his kind of a summary of the game, or at least USC's offense, was they had to do two things better and needed do two things better heading into this game against Arizona, uh, taking care of short yardage situations and taking care of the football. I know those are two obvious statements, Shotgun, but what, does that match up with your assessment of what happened with, in the game and with USC's offense? I mean, yes, but it's also any offensive coordinator will tell you, oh, if we would have converted on third down, if we don't turn the ball over, we'd have put a bunch of points up. Um, yeah, because then you're, you're not getting stopped at all. So yes, that, that is the two things that any offensive coordinator would say. But in USC's case, that really was what it was because they did move the ball really well all day. I mean, when you rack up over 550 yards, uh, you know, Graham Harrell said his biggest frustration was turning the ball over. And, you know, that's turning the ball over on downs and also, you know, the fumbles that they had and the interception by Keaton Slovis. So, yes, he said, you know, if we, if we convert the short yardage situations and don't turn the ball over, we put up 40 to 50 points. And he's not wrong. But again, that is what every offensive coordinator will say about their team. But we just convert on third down and we don't turn the ball over. So a little bit of an obvious statement, but in USC's case, it, it was, the, it was uh, what played out. If they would have converted the short yardage situations more than just every third down, uh, they would have you know, put up a, a, a pretty sizable, probably a, a 42 to 50 point uh, game there. In that sense, do you find those two things to be more of a, a rust issue or are there indicators of larger issues like the interior offensive line and their productivity? Yeah, it's a great question. And it, the thing is, this is something we've seen from the team. And that's the, the part that gives you pause to say, you know, maybe it's not just this one game, but, you know, there have been times where USC has struggled in short yardage situations in the past. You know, they had a couple physical beats in this one where, you know, linemen just got pushed back or got thrown out of the way. I thought as a whole, the offensive line, when I rewatched the game, they played much better than I, my initial assessment from watching the game while shooting photos. Um, I thought that there were a couple times in those short air situations where one guy got beat, but the rest of the guys were doing their job. And you got to clean that stuff up, obviously. But there were a couple times where the play calling just wasn't great. And Graham Harrell admitted that at least, uh, you know, at least on one of the fourth downs, the fourth and, uh, fourth and one at the five, I believe it was. Uh, he said, you know, I didn't put Jude Wolf in a great spot on that. And, you know, seeing where the defender was, you know, he would like to do, do something a little bit differently there. So those are the things that you got to clean up as a, as a coordinator as well. So I, I think it's a little bit of a combination. There's things they can clean up. But there's still a worry about where they're at with that offensive line. And can they, when the defense knows, hey, third and one, they're going to run the ball, or fourth and one, they're going to run the ball, can you get that yard regardless? And it was kind of uh, a little bit of both in this game. They picked up some, and then they, they left some out there. Uh, it was kind of 50-50. Some people kind of forget that when they watch the game. You know, their initial reaction was they didn't pick up any of these short yard situations. They did pick up some, and the tempo was working early in the game. But when, it, when Arizona State made their adjustments, USC didn't adjust quick enough as well. Both Harrell and Helton uh, commended Keaton Slovis for his growth, or at least the perceived growth that they saw against Arizona State. And one of the things they pointed to is that he's not forcing the ball. And w the example of that is his 11 checkdowns. And there's been a lot of talk about, and you and I even talked about it in, in its analysis after the game, talking about, you know, the BYU strategy of soft coverage. Uh, and in that sense, Keaton Slovis last year uh, would force the ball. And that's something that both Harrell and Helton talked about. What did you see from, from Keaton Slovis' growth? And, and was that assessment correct? by both the coaches yeah I think Keaton Slovis did do did a very good job of being patient in this offense he didn't try to force many throws there were a couple in there that he tried to do a little bit too much on instead of taking the check downs when he had the opportunity to but for the most part you know when, when he didn't have anything he either rolled out bought a little bit more time and created a different angle that's something he did a, a good job of but also just taking the you know the four or five yard gain throwing it to a uh, running back over the middle or you know to a wide receiver and let those guys try to make a play and you saw a couple times the you know the a check down turned into a 10 yard gain because someone broke one tackle uh, that's what you got to do in, in this offense now the thing is if you're backed up in third and 24 then yeah, teams are going to play really soft. And if you take a check down, it doesn't get you anywhere. Um, but he did a good job in those situations, rolling out of the pocket, 
manipulating the defense a little bit and taking off running and, and picking up a first down. And another one he rolled out to his left and then fired a strike for a 20-something yard gain to Drake London. So I thought he did a really good job being patient in those situations. And I think that is a sign of his growth And versus the BYU game, which everyone brings up, his first road start. Um, you know, obviously he threw into coverage a little bit too much there. I think he's doing a better job of that. I think you will see more teams – try to play soft and, and try to get away with that because, you know, when they, when Arizona State tried to blitz Keaton Slovis to do something different, he was 7-7 seven seven against the blitz. So, you know, he, he in man coverage, USC has the wide receivers that no one can match up with. And the fact that, you know, if you try to blitz Keaton Slovis, he's shown that he can make the right reads and, and get the ball out quickly. It's, it's tough to see teams doing anything other than that because that's the best thing to do against USC because of the matchups. Mm-hmm. Now, Helton gave us a brief preview of USC's upcoming matchup against Arizona. And he kind of laughed in, 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 uh, inside at the same time in the sense that this is going to be the second game where they're going off of unscouted looks, uh, considering that Arizona didn't get to play their game uh, due to COVID uh, issues. So uh, they're going up a new defensive coordinator once again. And so what, what was Helton's preview of this matchup? You know, it's interesting because if, as a coach, the USC could play a team in their first game three straight weeks because Utah, yeah. there's a lot of question marks about, you know, if they, they're going to be able to play at UCLA this week. If that happens, do, do you, do you want to play a team in their first game? Because, you know, they may be rusty and you saw it and you see games, teams in their first game and, you know, there's got to wear, you got to get into the groove a little bit, or do you want to be able to see teams and know what they're doing? And I think it's a little bit different. The, this past game with Arizona State and against Arizona because you're facing new defense coordinators. Uh, they're going to play Paul Rhodes, who was the head coach at Iowa State. Last time he was coordinator was like three or four years ago at, at Arkansas. So it, it, it's hard to know exactly what you're going to get there. So it, it's kind of a, you know, a toss up there, which one you would prefer. Against Utah, you're going to see a lot of the, the same stuff you've seen in the past. So I think they would be more comfortable facing them as a, you know, their first game rather than them getting in the groove. Um, so, but with Arizona, let's look at them a little bit. You know, you, you're going to see the RPO action on offense. It's going to be a little bit different, though, in the past, than it has been the last few years because there's no Khalil Tate. Yeah. He doesn't have that elusiveness. Grant Gunnell is more of a pocket passer. So your RPO is going to be a little bit different type of RPO, more the style of RPO that USC runs a little bit. Uh, but tempo is going to be a big thing. How does Arizona, can they get their tempo going, and how would that affect USC's defense? They didn't rotate a ton this past game, so we'll see if that changes a little bit. But on defense, that's the big question is, you know, what are you going to get from Paul Rhodes and his looks and, and how you prepare for that? Again, Clay Helton went back to, you know, you just got to run your stuff and, and, you know, be better at it than, than the defense and then make adjustments as the game goes along. And that's the biggest thing is how quickly can you make adjustments in game? Mm-hmm. We got uh, uh, injury updates as far as Brett Nealon and Brandon Peely. They're essentially the same thing as what Helton told us on Sunday during his press conference. They're both listed as questionable. Shotgun, as far as those two guys, uh, we did see their replacements, if you will, on Saturday. Uh, who is the biggest loss in terms of if they are not able to go against Arizona? I think the biggest concern is you love having your center there, but I think you feel comfortable with Justin Dedich coming in behind Brett Nealon. They really love everything Nealon does as far as making calls and whatnot. You have a lot of confidence in Dedich. He's played there. I think there's a bigger concern on the defensive side, actually. You know, Brandon Peely's not a starter, and he's not the center of the line like, like, uh, like Brett Nealon is. But if they get that tempo going in Arizona – how much are you trusting the guys behind Marlon Tui Pelotu? You know, Stanley Tafo came in in this game and played really well. I thought he did. Uh, but he's still very inexperienced behind Marlon Tui Pelotu. Tui Pelotu, I, I, think, I think it was either – he was either one play above or below his career high in snaps. So he played yeah. a ton in this past game against Arizona State. And that's Arizona State's offense not doing a ton, not putting a lot of drives together. So if Arizona does get their offense going – then you have some concerns there at, at the nose tackle position, especially because you want to keep Marlon Tui below too fresh. And Brendan Peely comes in uh, and, and can contribute as well when he gets healthy, then you feel really confident at that position because Marlon was a beast in this past game. So mm-hmm. I, I think there's more concern on the defensive side just because you don't want Marlon Tui below to be worn down and you know having to rely on some guys that don't have a ton of experience behind it. Especially when what we saw from Marlon last season was he kind of the consistency waned as the season got on. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want that to happen again just because you're playing him or you're forced to play him so much. Um, But as I mentioned at the top, we did get to talk to Vivai Malapaya and Tyler Vons. But it's hard, you know, Shotgun, when you have these Zoom press conferences and you put everyone together. Of course, you're going to want to talk to Graham Harrell and get all your questions out. Uh, So any nuggets or interesting bits of information you got from those two? 
I, I mean, they, they talked about, Vi talked about how, you know, he was being a little selfish on, on the, the fumble at the goal line. He said they're, they're coached up to never reach, for, reach out the ball at the goal line unless it's fourth down or unless the game's on the line, basically. And, you know, first and goal situation in the first quarter is not that time. So he said, you know, I, I took my time on the sideline because he basically got benched after that for a little while. Uh, and he, you got to grow from it. And that's a, you know, a veteran guy, you don't need, you got to eliminate those type of mistakes as you move forward in the season because their three fumbles come from three guys they expect to hold on to the ball. Marquis Stepp and Tyler Vaughn's being another one. Interesting that USC, uh, the two players supply were two guys that fumbled in this. Uh, yeah. But at the, it was also interesting that Vi said at the end of the day, you know, uh, or at the end of the game, he and Stephen Carr had a conversation. He said with about three and a half minutes, 350 left. So not like right as USC's in scoring territory uh, before the, the Brew McCoy tip. But with like 350 left, it you know somehow we're going to get this done, and they just had that confidence on the sideline. Now maybe yeah. that tells you a little bit about this team's personality versus last year, because that was one of the things Graham Harrell also mentioned. He said that I don't. He said to be honest, I don't think this team wins it last year. He said that that sometimes there would be guys who are frustrated on the sidelines and things, and there's a difference between being frustrated and showing your frustration. Mm. He felt like this team is a little more. Uh, cohesive in the fact that you know everyone's rallying together and whatnot so those things kind of stood out and Tyler Vaughn's talking about Drake London saying that you know it, it look he's still being Drake but it looks like he's playing still playing basketball out there just trying to jump over people and whatnot um, so you know just being a being praising the younger receiver and you know I think he sees the talent there Drake London is is continuing to bring up his game and Tyler Vaughn is the veteran guy can, can definitely see how much that guy's grown beside him. Yeah, I think Harold said too as well that Drake London is no longer the freshman. He knows that he has an important role in the offense. So definitely look for, for more London time. But if you listen to instant analysis, we said Her Graham Harrell had that gleam in his eye when talking about Drake London. And the gleam is two for two now. So, so there's that. But that's going to wrap it up for today's uh, instant analysis. We'll talk to Todd Orlando tomorrow on Wednesday and a couple of defensive players. So stay tuned for that. But for Shotgun Spratling, I'm Keely Yor. For more, check out uscfootball.com.